What's going on, everyone? It's Daniel from Coin Spots here. Hope you're having a good bloody Wednesday. Literally everything in crypto has been falling off a cliff, but that's all right. We're here to make sense of it and try and uh, capitalize on these opportunities here that that uh, are presented to us by the market. So we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin, ETH, EOS in terms of the charts. And then we're going to be talking about three pieces of news. Coinbase potentially becoming a bank. The South Korean exchange Corbett delisting uh, five coins, most of them being privacy coins. And then the whole cease and desist with ship chain. Right. So looking here on the four hour for Bitcoin, let's just move this down a little bit. Right. So yesterday night, actually on Twitter, I was posting this SFP that happened here in Bitcoin and I basically got stopped out on it. So right here at, you know, 7930 ish was the previous swing low. And I've had that marked as a potential long SFP. And we were right at this candle right here. I saw that we broke through, but then closed above it. And that, for me, was a signal to go long. However, I did place a tight stop loss because I saw we had a lot of bearish momentum coming down. And also the volume wasn't really where I liked it to be. So I knew this was a, a pretty risky setup. That's why I had a, a tight stop loss just right here at the bottom of the swing low. And then when I woke up this morning, I found that I got stopped out. So obviously just goes to show that every trade isn't profitable. Every trade doesn't go according to your thesis. But that's all right. We're all here to learn improve get better right that's really the whole point of this channel and and you know what i want to get get through to everyone is that anyone who tells you that they have the answers and they know how to trade this that, and the other you know they've never taken a non-profitable trade bunch of bs so right now what i'm actually looking at is a couple levels for bitcoin as you can see we're currently at this previous swing high back here on April 3rd, I believe. Yep. The April 3rd swing high is this level that we're currently at right now. And I, I uh, labeled it as a potential SR flip. Right now, it's still looking good. We've got about an hour left until the candle closes. So we're going to see if this um, previous swing high provides us some kind of resistance, uh, excuse me, support. Uh, in order to have a little bit of a bounce off of. And the setup that I'm really looking for is actually a short at this 0 0.382 FIB level. So right, uh, right here, I didn't do the actual FIB because the the levels were, or the actual the Fibonacci retracement was getting in the way of um, the markings that I had on my on my horizontal line. So I just labeled this support level as a as the fib so basically you can see right here that we've got two touches on this level one touch here and we've got another touch right here then that um or this support level i should say has confluence with the 0 0.382 fib level and because we've had two touches and a pretty violent break of this level what i'm thinking is that we're going to come back up test this as resistance and then fall back down and then on that test i'm going to be looking to get in on a short so that's kind of the setup that i'm looking for right now in bitcoin um overall it's looking pretty bearish i'd say obviously we're definitely going to have a bounce sometime soon because anytime we just fall off a cliff like this there's going to be a short-term bounce because markets don't just go straight down and straight up and this is pretty much as vertical as you're going to get in 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 the crypto markets. I mean, <laughs> this is pretty 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 freaking vertical right here. Um another thing I wanted to note before we switch over to ETH is 
this whole concept of these huge pumps that happen. So anytime you see um, these just huge bullish candles, most of the time they're going to get filled up again. And what I mean filled up is that this isn't really an efficient move. This just huge candle. And sometime sooner or later, as you can see right here, the candle is getting filled up again. Whether we break all the way down below it or halfway or whatnot, you know, to this 7,500 swing high level, it goes to show that usually anytime you see one of these candles, sometime in the future, price is going to come back to it and pretty much retrace to kind of fill out this, this move right here. And in this case, how long did it take? It took 41 days for that to happen. You know, obviously, sometimes it's sooner. Um, if you look on, on the chart for NEO, the same thing happened. I remember I was uh, watching a huge, huge bullish candle that skyrocketed the price like 15 or so dollars. And now the price has been, um, or the candle, I should say, has been, or the candle has been filled up again. That, that, that's kind of how I um, how I think of it. So moving on to ETH, I did post an ETH short setup, didn't play out because I was thinking we were going to retest the bottom of this range as resistance and that would give me the signal to open up my short because yesterday I was talking about how I missed this SFP. I was just, you know, not at the computer, you know, available to, to uh, initiate a trade, so... I did miss this SFP, and just by, or if you were going to just open up a short based on this break of the bottom range, for me, there really isn't enough um, enough evidence to to open up a short because price could have you know basically picked up somewhere at a random level. Just like what happened, remember, with Bitcoin right here, there was really no SR level that this 7930-ish um, bounce pretty much, you know, fitted, right? It, it, it kind of just bounced out of nowhere. And the same thing could have happened with ETH. That's why just because it broke through the bottom of this range didn't give me enough evidence to open up a short. I wanted a retest of this range before... Uh, heading down uh, to this 75,000 uh, or 76,000 Satoshi level. As you can see, it is a violent level because we've touched here. Huge move downward, huge move upward, breaking the level. So anytime you see this, just very, very long uh, selling candles and a breakthrough of the level with a huge bullish candle or a breakthrough of the level to the downside with a huge bearish candle, it shows that that level is a very violent level, and it's going to provide a good amount of support or resistance, which you can see right here, almost to the T this level touched, and we are just off to, uh, to who knows what now, <laughs> right? Because I I'm not personally seeing any, any setups right now for ETH, what I think is going to happen is we're going to have a, a swing low right here with our um, higher low to the left and higher uh, low to the right. And this huge, uh, basically, inverse shooting star candle to signify a you know um, short-term bottom for ETH. Moving on to EOS. Um, Quick just update on EOS, still looking to buy in right here in this blue box area, which is the previous um, previous high for EOS all the way back here. I did mention this yesterday. Um, also, the uh, release of the main net for EOS is coming sometime in June. So typically something like that um, is going to drive up the price. I know I've you know, said before not to just trade exclusively on uh, headlines, right? If they're, ah, oh, telegram notifications, great. Um, you know, 
if there's a new wallet releasing, all right, I'm going to go buy, right? That's, you know, most of the time, that's not what you should be doing. Here in this case, the launch of the mainnet for EOS is something that's huge because you're uh, swapping those ERC20 tokens for native EOS tokens. So they're actually launching their own uh, platform, which is pretty much essential to the whole EOS uh, brand. But also, we are right here at this very, very good SR level that has confluence with the previous top of EOS. So I think that that is a uh, good enough signal uh, to load up on some EOS at these levels. Moving on to the news. So had this piece come out two days ago about Coinbase basically um, thinking about becoming a bank, which is pretty interesting because it would definitely make... Um, it would, it would allow more uh, everyday people to, I guess, feel comfortable getting into cryptocurrency, right? So a lot of times now you hear that banks are bar barring people from um, transferring money into exchanges and stuff like that because whatever, you know, the case may be, might be some type of regulation um, or just that the bank doesn't, you know, support cryptocurrency or, or whatnot, because essentially the whole concept of cryptocurrency is a threat to banks. And if Coinbase actually becomes uh, a bank and gets a federal bank charter, right, they're going to be able to open up accounts for people. And basically, since Coinbase is already a crypto exchange, there really wouldn't be any problem for people transferring their fiat right into, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. So I think something like this is is definitely really interesting. Um, I know Coinbase has, um, or its future or ultimate goal, I believe, is to become a bank um, and, and a couple other things. I don't remember. They don't, they don't just want to just limit themselves to being an exchange. They have a, a lot bigger ambitions uh, besides that. So it, it, it would definitely really be interesting to see if they do get this federal bank charter. Also, that would mean that they don't have to kind of continuously be in compliance with state to state regulations, because right now um, they basically have to worry about each state and the different you know regulations that each state has in terms of, you know, securities laws and stuff like that, where if they have a federal bank charter, they're really just dealing with the federal government. So it'll definitely be a lot easier on Coinbase's part that they don't have to, you know, micromanage so many different things for each different state and and, and be compliant with, with each different state's laws. So South Korean crypto exchange Corbett drops Monero, Zcash, and Dash, right? Those are the big headlines because they're all privacy coins and what's interesting is that Gemini just was um, SEC verified to trade Zcash obviously I know this is in South Korea Gemini is in the United States but it's interesting how South Korea we think is a very pro uh, crypto you know country and this exchange, Corbett, has decided to delist privacy coins. Now, they didn't give a reason for it. Um, they just kind of stated their, um, I guess, motto, per se, right? We are fully committed to building the most secure place for you to trade cryptocurrencies. Kind of just a cliche answer, not really answering the question. Um. So obviously this kind of just brings up some kind of uh, you know speculation of, of what's going on here in, in, in Korea and how could this affect the market as a whole. Um, guaranteed privacy coins are a, a or more of a threat, I guess you could consider them since they have no uh, records of their transactions, right? Like Monero, there's no 
ledger that you can view them on and pretty much exchanges since they're centralized that's kind of the weak point in terms of acquiring these privacy coins because the only way that you can get Monero or Zcash or something like that is through an exchange unless obviously you know somebody who has you know Monero, Zcash or whatever and you kind of do an exchange under the table or something like that but for most people the only way they can get privacy coins is through that the um, the channel of the centralized exchange excuse me and if governments cut that off people really aren't going to be able to acquire those anymore right also since you're acquiring privacy coins on exchange they're technically not private because they know or the exchange at least knows who's buying them they might not know which address they're going to since there's no record but they know because they have those kyc rules know your customer rules they know who's buying them so it's not totally anonymous so i think this is going to be an interesting trend to watch um because i don't know pretty much anything about the korean you know financial sector or securities laws in korea so who knows right did zcash monero dash not comply with the korean securities laws so it's going to be interesting to see how this fleshes out um because you know we might or south korea might be having the same issues that you know we are having here in the united states with security law compliance which brings me to the next and final piece of ship chain basically getting a cease and desist from south carolina for their uh, ico and their tokens not complying with securities laws they're basically uh, conducting an unregistered security offering so obviously this is the big 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 issue that a lot of icos have been having is are they sec and regulatory compliant um, and that's kind of what the sec and, and government is really cracking down on fraudulent icos i don't know about ship chain not invested in it never really even heard of the project to be honest so, you know, I don't know much about it, but this is definitely a trend that we're going to be seeing continuously in the United States. ICOs not being regulatory compliant, as well as exchanges delisting tokens or not adding tokens, because th since the exchanges themselves want to be regulatory compliant, they can't add tokens that are not regulatory compliant which in turn leads to a lack of liquidity for those tokens. Obviously, until something like decentralized exchanges comes up, but that's probably a couple months, probably even a year into the future before we see something like that. So definitely a trend to, to keep watching and kind of a warning about... Um, you know, investing in ICOs. Personally, I don't really do that. Um, obviously, it's very, very high risk. Honestly, in my opinion, it's more risky than margin trading. So ICOs, just not really my thing. And then you've got all of these regulatory issues and a potential lack of liquidity for those tokens. And in the end, you'll basically be stuck holding a bag. And no one really wants to be stuck holding a bag. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Going to continue watching Bitcoin as always. Definitely a good barometer for how the entire market is doing. Still looking pretty good here, 33 minutes until the close. Going to see where that closes. And hopefully we have that, uh, that bounce to the 0.382 Fib level and I can open up my short. Would be a lovely trade if that happens. So, yep. Yeah. If you guys could, hit that like button. Really helps spread the video. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Bringing out these videos Monday through Friday. Trying to, you know, give some value in the space, in the crypto space. So yeah, I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys.